Welcome everybody. Thanks for doing this with me. Um, my fingers and toes are crossed because I think this stuff is a great idea for people stream. And then I realize, oh wait, one's in Australia, one's on the other side of the US and uh, hopefully everything goes off without a hitch um, or less hitches than we've started with. So um, yeah, what we're gonna do here today is uh, a, what we call a Blender film review. Um, as Tim has already mentioned, you guys probably know, but the reason we do them, um, we haven't done one in a while, so I feel like I should explain. Um, is because, you know, uh, Blender is ultimately a means to an end to create art, whether it's a game, whether it's a still render, um, or a movie, in, in this case, in a full animation. And so uh, since we are, we should all be trying to get to that end result rather than just fart around in a program, um, it's good to look at those end results and study them, analyze them. We learn from, from, from the, final, uh, um, the final product, and then we can kind of reverse engineer them into our own uh, workflows and also they inspire us. They um, it was a big part of me when I was in college. I would listen to podcasts about visual effects and just kind of get a bigger picture of the of the broader industry. And it would inspire me, and I would learn tips and tricks all along the way. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We are uh, we haven't done one in a while, but we've looked at other films like Sintel and alike, um, and just try and glean what we can from them, both from a a story you know narrative in the movie, also nerd out with the blender stuff and talk about artistry and, and all that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I guess with that in mind, since this is a shorter film, we can get st uh, actually watch the film together, um, if that's cool with everybody. And then we will pick it back up. So grab popcorn, grab tea or whatever you have, whatever you like to enjoy. Mm -hmm. There you go. The morning. <laughs> that's right, Wade, early morning for you. And uh, we will be back in a few minutes once the film is done.
Okay, that was spring. All right, so there we go. How do we, who wants to start? Do we, who wants to say first, oh, wait, I'm sorry, I should start. So <laughs> first in the, yeah, um, so I have this little, you know, presentation for us to be guided by, so to speak. Um, some background information about this short, which I should have done before I played it. It was released in 2019. Everyone should know this. It's brand new. Written and directed by Andy, uh, Andy at the at the Blender Institute, Blender Animation Studio. Um, a, a year and a half, from what I could tell, in production, but five years kind of uh, simmering in Andy's head. Uh, a team of four to ten artists created the short, 
And based on the production logs, it looked like it was just a team of four for the majority of it. And then they had some, some artists join in the uh, final crunch. Um, first open movie created with Blender 2.8. So that's kind of the background of this film. And we're gonna start discussing, um, yeah, there's play the movie. We're gonna start with the story, talking about things like narrative and plot, character development, interpretation of meaning. So with that in mind, does anyone want to start with what they, they thought of this story? Well, Ken, I wanna hear what you, you thought. What, what I yeah, thought? Yeah, I was hoping... tell us what you thought. So I, I should also start maybe say, pie. Yeah, I think we're a, a somewhat split on this movie between the four of us to where two of us are, are more on the critical side and two of us are, you know, middle to a little more positive. Um, I'm more on the positive side, but um, so I'll just say what I think without trying to, to justify what, you know, necessarily. But I am a sucker for, for realistic visuals. Most people know this if you follow my tutorials. So I... I was sucked in very quickly by the world. I thought it was very good. Um, it, uh, comparing it to, to the previous short films, it's like, wow, this is a great quality, in my opinion. Very near photorealism uh, as far as the environment's concerned. So I was sucked in. I'm also a sucker for larger than life creature interactions. So, so that the massive alpha character, I don't know what it is about that. I love it. I remember seeing it um, in, in, forgive me, but uh, um, Studio Ghibli, like, that that's kind of a theme that p pops up in those films, right? Like big spirit yeah. animals kind of thing. Okay, um, so yeah. I, I liked it back when I when I watched my brother watched those, and I kind of watched those as well back in the day. Um, so I I like that theme of of larger than life creatures and interacting with the with these small humans. Um, something about that, the metaphors uh, surrounding that, and what those creatures often represent, very much like in this movie, represents. Uh, well, we'll talk, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think that represents. But um, so I liked that. It immersed me into the story, but it was, I don't know, the story didn't blow me away. I was m more blown away by the visuals than I was by the depth of the story, let's say, or the impactfulness of the story. Um, but it was enough to, to leave positive for me. Um, good enough, I guess. All right, Tim, what about you? <laughs> um, I'm definitely more on the, uh, I would say, not so positive side. So I guess coming into this, I can definitely see there's a lot of good intention behind the making of this film. And especially reading the YouTube comments, it seems like a lot of people just want to see it succeed. They want to feel good after watching this. And I feel like in that way, it did deliver on that aspect. But for someone like myself, I mean, I try to watch a new movie every day. And something like this, it just not only was it forgettable if I had to put a word to it, but it felt very uninspired if I was honest. And the, the best part of, like I had a, a little notepad on the side of things that I thought were done well. And the opening shot where it drips on the little uh, petal of the leaf or, or of the creature and it made the noise and then it cut to black. I was like, okay, maybe I am into something new here. But then they had this font come up that was like last minute. Oh, we forgot to put the blender blah, blah in there. Let's throw that in there really quick. And I was like, ooh, like that, that almost took me out of the moment. And then it brought me back again when it showed the opening shot of the environment. And then honestly, after that, I didn't have a lot of, a lot of positive notes after those two moments. And I felt like, uh, I mean, I, we'll get more into everything more in detail, mm -hmm. but I have a lot to say about the film as a whole and especially the character design. It just felt very much how I would describe it as compromised. It's almost like you had a team of people and they each wanted something for the main character. And in the end, you had like a Frankenstein of, oh, this, this one person wanted her. Oh, this reminded them of their daughter. And this character that just was so uninspired and un without her having any kind of voice, sometimes it works as you see with like Pixar movies when they have like Wally or the beginning of Up where it's silent and they just need the music to carry it through. Mm. And I felt like this one, not only did the music carry it through, I felt like it held most of the weight and I don't think it, it actually carried it well throughout because it, the characters, I just did not get behind. The creature I thought was really cool though, okay. but we'll get more into that, I'm sure, as we hear the other opinions of you guys. Yeah, definitely. Wayne, what about you? Well, I've got some uh, yeah, similar things and thoughts to Tim about the, about the film. Like I, I do want it, 
it to succeed. And I think Tim's right when he's saying like you can see from the from the comments, like everyone's kind of rooting for this to like, yeah, 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 blender, yeah, blender. But I think on a yeah, there's there's some really really lovely things in there. Uh, one of them was the, the the music, like the music, especially in the opening, was just beautiful, and it does I think carry a lot of the the weight of the of the film. Um, and the visuals, especially in, in, in the beginning part of it, um, were really, really strong. And especially knowing, like, we've, like, used Blender 2.8, like, before, like, actually from now and, you know, however many months that we've been using it. But these guys have, have done it from, you know, a year and a half ago when it was just, you know, if you, if you open it up and you had the default cube, like, it was likely to crash from the default cube stage. So that's when those guys were, were using it. So I'm really impressed with the technical aspects of how they, they got the software to do all, all the stuff that they did. But on a story uh, point of view, I think it's, um, I think it's, re it's really weak. Um, yeah, it, like to summarize it, like, okay, we all, we all understand that, yeah, um, spring is a personification of the, of the season spring. But if you just break it down into the bullet points, um, it's, it's a really, really simple story and it, it doesn't have any, um, conflict or anything like that. So um, Spring goes to find a weird stick thing in the forest, um, which she gets from the weird monster, that's cool. Um, she drops the weird thing, she picks it up, and then everything's okay. Um, and that's, like, that's the story. And then you find out, oh, she's done it a, a thousand billion million times before at the end. And you're like, okay, well, well then her whole character seems ambiguous as to, to what her objective was because she's a little girl but she's been around for a billion years, but she's moving like... It, it, her movements weren't... Maybe we'll talk about animation later because there's, there's a lot of really great moments, but then there's a lot of acting choices which aren't quite right. They're beautifully animated. They just, they're just just not right for the, for the character. Um, I don't know whether you want to get into that now or whether you wanted to hear um, what, what Jonathan had to say about, about story and, and stuff. Yeah, let's uh, let me get Jonathan Lampel your op just general opinion impression on the story, and then I I, I think this will be make for some very interesting detailed conversation uh, after yeah. this. What do you think? Lampel? Yeah, I think you guys have more to say about it than I do. Like, especially since you guys watched way more movies than I have. <laughs> um, but I do agree with the point that like it did seem a little. I wouldn't say as as forgettable, but like anticlimactic in a way where like it started out really gorgeous and it was um visually like, like the composition the lighting um the like the modeling was really impressive especially after hearing that it was only done by like basically one guy like all of that yeah. modeling is really impressive um and so i loved a lot of the visuals um there was a couple things that i'm sure we'll get into later um but as far as the story goes and like the overall like feeling that I got from it, it started out like very like this is like going to be like an intense like Lord of the Rings type adventure where we got this big valley that's going to be really intense. But then we find out that she basically just does this all the time mm -hmm. so yep. that it made it seem less impressive um, or like less like there was no really lead up into the giant creature thing. Mm -hmm. It just sort of like happens basically automatically. And so it didn't really seem like there was much of like a, a struggle or like connection to the character of her like journey. Um, so it just seemed like it just like happened. Um, but the thing at the end where you see like all of the different uh, sticks or, or things connected to those strings, um, I didn't get the impression that it was her. Like Wayne said, I kind of thought yeah, of it yeah, like, yeah. like they're like family or like people have like gone before her have like done this all before so that, I thought that was kind of a cool way to wrap it up hmm. um, but it did seem like oh okay cool and it was just sort of like a fun fun movie I guess mm -hmm. that uh, kind of goes for like mass appeal I suppose rather than like trying to get too too deep into things mm -hmm. yeah I think that's a good assessment hearing I left I, I said at the beginning that I kind of left with a more positive uh, feeling and I would just kind of what you said Lampel like it was a fun little story, like a snack of a movie, I guess is kind of how I yeah. left with. And, but hearing um, Wayne and, and Tim talk about it, I'm, I'm thinking like, what did I miss? You know, like, I, I think I'm fairly critically minded, but um, yeah, I, I agree with you that I didn't think it was spring the girl doing it over and over, but definitely like this, 
this generational thing, that this was her one time, like she's been hearing it passed down from generation to generation, like this is what you do, you you know, you're you're made to to take five minutes to go grab this thing out of the forest and 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 you know make it out alive <laughs> um but yeah i thought so i thought that was a neat way to wrap it up like oh so this is what happens year after year after year you know for millions of years blah 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 um the thing that got, i got that hung me up on the story that or that like i couldn't quite figure out was the danger when she lost the weird stick thing as wayne said um yeah I, I didn't understand what was going to happen and why the animals, the, the the big creatures were like, wait, she dropped that thing? We are going to kill it. We're going to stomp on it and whoever's in our way. You yeah. know, I didn't understand quite that. But other than that, I, I think summarizing it as a short snippet snack of a story that, yeah, maybe it did have mass appeal. Maybe that, uh, yeah, I can, maybe that's where it kind of landed. But, hmm. Well, I think if you're talking about the, the, the story, I get where you're saying where you don't think it was her that was doing it for a, for a thousand years. It's something that's been handed down, you know, generation upon generation, which is which is a lovely thought. I've thought of that as well. Mm. But then it's like, why don't they, they can show that. So maybe it's her mother or her grandmother at the start, like sending her off to this journey. And she's a bit trepidatious about, about going on onto it. And then a lot of those acting moments make more sense. Like when she's feeding the dog, and then she looks up and she's like, it's not clear whether she's excited, whether she's scared, whether she's like hesitant. To, to, it's just a weird kind of look where she's like, oh, okay, uh, blink, 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 eat my biscuit and walk off. Um, like that's, that, that moment is not clear. And then when she's in the, you know, the forest, she's, she's a little bit uncertain, rubbing her hands together and hitting, hitting his thing. But the whole, I guess, there's certain things that you could do to the story to make it a little bit stronger. Mm. So one, if you, the, the antagonist in this story was an accident, like one of those weird tree um, monsters knocks over a tree and she drops the thing. That's the inciting incident into the, oh no, things aren't going to go very well. But what if there was another personification of one of the other um, seasons, like she's spring, which comes after winter. What if winter was in, in the forest trying to mess with her and make her job hard, which is why she's, um, trepidatious in why she's like, oh, 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 where is, where is this um, winter character that's always trying to thwart me when it's time to move the seasons on, you know? And then it puts her dog in danger. I don't know what the dog's name is, but let's just call him Spot. Autumn, now. actually. Um, Speaking of, persona. does he have a name? I don't know whether. Yeah, Autumn, Autumn like just like the season, which doesn't make uh, a lot of sense. Wait, the dog's name is Autumn. It's yeah. Autumn. Oh, okay. Well, that. Let's say what? So when. When autumn rolls around, which is what we call fall over here in this this hemisphere, um, <laughs> like there's a dog go and <laughs> there's a dog go and bark at the tree, and then and then autumn the leaves fall. I don't know, like, you know, like, anyway, I'm getting beside myself. But uh, yeah, so where where the, the the antagonist in this story could be the personification of winter and she's trying to thwart them, and that's what causes the accident and tries to you know you're you're not going to move it on to. Uh, onto spring because winter is here to stay. Winter is here, people. I don't know if you've been watching Game of Thrones, but winter is here. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've seen the last two episodes. Winter has been not arrived in the last two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, winter is still coming. <laughs> it'll get here. But it's been eight years and it'll get here eventually. <laughs> Actually, I agree with Wayne. Not only did I, well, it, I don't think a good story necessarily needs a good antagonist, but I agree with that would have been a perfect scenario to sum this up better. But I think another thing that really bothered me is we got to stop having cliche moments, even in animation films, where it's like at the last second she saves it or right? at the last second she saves the dog. It's, I, I don't even feel like they're in danger watching this. I, it doesn't suspend my disbelief at all. Mm -hmm. And I never felt like they were actually in any danger. And then her losing the thing, we didn't even know the importance of the thing to begin with. And since they have like hundreds of these little weird stick things to begin with, I just don't understand why not just pull another one off of the creature. I know that might disrupt some balance, but it seems like they have plenty to spare. <laughs> and the other thing that well, I thought was kind of bizarre was at the end, not only did they ever balance properly, and like when they're hanging it in this giant thing at the end where you see hundreds of them hanging, it looks like one side is clearly heavier and larger than the other side. I just kept thinking of that they would, if a wind blew, like they would fall out. I didn't really feel like they were stuck. Even when she has it in the staff, when she put it in, I was like, wait, is that going to stay in? And then and when it fell out, I was like, well, of course it fell out. There's no <laughs> way for it to like stay in. You didn't wrap it with anything. It just looked like it would just pop right out. Mm -hmm. So then when you see it at the end, I was like, are we reincorporating that these things are oddly shaped? And 
I thought that was a little bizarre. They're magical. Yeah, Which magical. I honestly, at first I was uh, upset with the way that it found, but then you're right. I, I could understand that maybe magic was continuing the momentum of why it kept yeah. bouncing with every bounce, but I did find that a little strange too, that it like conveniently bounced toward the end of a cliff. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, and it, it was moving in a very like, linear fashion. I was like, please don't let there be a cliff, and there was a cliff. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> like, it was almost like disappointing from when she got into the forest after she met the big creature, it just felt like a big disappointment of cliches one after the next. And then like the dog almost dying. So you're like pulling on a quick sympathy card and you have the music uh, reflecting that. And I was like, no, I, I, you just know the dog's fine. Right. Like there right. wasn't any heartstring that was pulled for me. And I, yeah, I just, I really have issues with how uninspired it feels, but the, the good intentions, like what both you and uh, Lampel were saying, I think they want just something that's, light-hearted that is easy to digest and then they can move on but i guess for someone like me i'm very critical of like these type of um, especially film i think with the level of quality that everyone's hitting on the range and the spectrum of like not only i feel like pixar was the standard for a long time i feel like it's indecipherable now with what is good and bad quality because i feel like it's all top-notch and then you see something like spider-man into the spider-verse and you're like wow, that's a breakthrough in animation Mm -hmm. where spring feels like, oh, it's another recap of what's already been done over the past 10 years. So the visuals to me weren't that impressive, I guess for me, because I'm not even in 3D. So as someone that's not even a part Mm -hmm. of 3D, it just felt like, okay, you're doing realism, but then the characters then should really stand out. And I felt the characters were very weak. And especially with her going into this forest, or uh, yeah, forest that's very cold, like very, very cold. Besides, she did one hand rub before she hit the thing and then she did one like cough into her hand where there's some smoke but like there was no indication on her face there was nothing on her mm. anywhere else that indicated that it was cold weather and it you almost forget you almost like you're in a fog forest you forget that it's supposed to be like this really cold frost forest mm. so yeah i just I, i'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about that I, I think you both are making extremely valid points um i i did kind of try and immerse myself in like their production logs because they created like 12 of them. And Wayne, you mentioned that some uh, some like preliminary information about her, if it is a generational thing, having that expressed to us would have been nice. And I think that they were planning mm-hmm. that because they have artwork and even a model, like a work in progress model of like a hut where she lived. And I, I wonder if some of that would have featured uh, more expression, you know, more more background information. But they, they did cut it. Um, apparently... I, how, do you know how long this is off the top of your head? I forget. How long? Just oh, under almost eight minutes. minutes just under eight minutes. Uh, Seven forty-five. Yeah. So I, I don't know how long was too long, but apparently it was. Um, I think they got close to nine minutes at one point, if I remember Andy saying that. But I I wonder if and what Andy would say um, as far as his story and what he had imagined being potentially cut up for the sake of production, uh, budget, or just timing. Um, the one and a half years, I don't know, that's a decent amount of time to make a short like this um, yeah. with a team like that. But anyway, so I feel like they were going to try and do that, but for whatever reason, that was lopped off maybe for the negative. But but Tim, when you were talking about like the quick sympathy card from the dog, like I related to that in that it was such a flash of a sympathy card that the feeling's gone and it's in, almost immediately forgettable. And it, it left me with... With like because I was I was immersed by the visuals that I, I I did leave with like oh it kind of it kind of checked all the boxes you know and it felt like that's maybe what they were trying to do you know as if uh, uh, you've just seen so many films and you were able to analyze like what what plot mile markers are in most films and you achieve that and I don't know when you said that it kind of made me think of blender in a way where there where there is innovation in blender as a software a lot of it is also reverse engineered is not is maybe too uh um is not the right word but like it's inspired by other softwares and we're and blender is kind of making the mark you know as it as it's developed um so i'm kind of curious wasn't elephant dream the last or what was it called the last one Oh, so, well, the Elephant Stream was the first one they ever did. And it, yeah, 2008. And it was very abstract and weird, and it got, uh, like, flack oh, yeah. for that. So I feel like yeah. since then they've been... What was the laundromat one? Oh, Cosmos Laundromat. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that, even though it, 
you definitely got mixed reviews. I feel like they were trying to be different. They were trying to stand out. Mm-hmm. Where this one, I feel like they were trying to fit in. Yeah. And I think that's where my issue comes with, like, exactly what you said, having, like, a checklist of, like, oh, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. And I feel like in the age of film where, like, people are, are watching more and more, mm-hmm. and I feel like with this type of film, uh, you got to stand out in some way. And I think by fitting in, they're going to be forgotten. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, nowadays, especially with visuals, since they're so good all around, I think to really stand out, you have to be creative. And I feel like creativity really stands out or like originality stands out nowadays, yeah. even if it's bad. Like I didn't even think too highly of Into the spider versus story, mm-hmm. but I thought the visuals alone were so captivating and so different mm-hmm. that it really made a splash in the industry where something like spring, I feel like it could have came out in 2008 and it would have garnered kind of the same reaction of mm-hmm. um, not really standing out, just okay. really fitting in. Right. Right. Yeah. Good point. Okay. Man, well, we, yeah, I think talked about the story a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely gonna watch it with a new set of eyes. I think, thanks to you guys. Oh, ho- hopefully, we haven't ruined it. Before you no, can. Like, even like, as, no, you honestly haven't. Even as you've been talking about this, like, I feel like I had similar thoughts, but for whatever reason, and I, I'll think about this more as I watch it again. But like, for whatever reason, I ended up with like, huh, that was fun. On to the next thing, you know, like that was my general mm-hmm. reaction. Um, but yeah, there's a lot in the production log that kind of enriches the, the background of it being made. And I don't know, maybe that just, uh, yeah, I think though, Ken, it's, it's great to have all that production log there, but I think that's all, all that stuff is the behind the scenes for the people who, who are, um, the blender community. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to put something out to the public, all of that stuff needs to be in the final product. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't just compromise and go, Oh, well, no, people need to read the, the blog that the, a blog this character keeps a blog like as a side website um, thing and if they read that it all it all makes sense mm-hmm. like people know that you need to watch the thing and, and it all needs to make sense so everything all of the information that you want in there has to be in the final product yeah. like you can't just like take it out and then expect people to to figure it out and go oh you know well I'm close enough right, yeah, right. Like, Ken, I feel like you're going into it wanting to appreciate it more that's because true. of what you've learned about it that's true exactly that's yeah true. Um, yeah, can we? I'd like to talk about some of the the character animation and acting choices, if that's that's all right. I know this is my kind of realm, and and I, I guess you guys have have stuff to say about it as well. Um, but is, is, is that all right if we if we yeah, kind of talk yeah, about yeah, absolutely. The um, yes, yeah, yeah go ahead. Like overall, I think there was a lot of really great animated uh, moments in in this short. There's there's a few of the of the shots where they were put out and touted as, oh, here's a shot from, they were on the trailers and stuff like that. Um, and I have a really, uh, I think the acting choices are really wrong for the character, especially like we've all been talking about, you know, all this stuff doesn't make sense in, in the whole and the final thing. It's like um, the one thing that I really have a big, huge problem with, yeah, I think it's really beautifully animated, but when Spring is going to hit this, whatever it is, and she's got her staff, and she's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm looking See, to at me, that. Yeah. it looks good. Yeah, you've, you've animated it really well. Like it, it's, it's been beautifully animated, except all those characters, like those, those acting choices, it, to me it looks like this is an 11-year-old cartoon girl-ish, uh, something like that, but it's moving like a 30-something-year-old guy doing, doing reference. Uh, and I, because that's because I know behind the scenes, I know Hielty, um animated that, right? And he's really stuck to his, his reference and he's really like got into the nitty gritty of, oh, let's move the fingers on this staff and let's get it looking, looking really good. But there's one thing that I think he's forgotten is the audience is watching this. Is this an 11 year old girl? Has she done this a million times before or is this her first time? And either, if any of those points are true, the way that she's moving isn't true to, to the character. Like she, she shouldn't be moving that way. Like what 11 year old girl um, puts her staff down and, and like rubs her hands and, and <laughs> like, I, I haven't seen an 11 year old girl uh, right. do that. And if it's like a, a girl who's done it like a billion times, like the story would suggest, then she's done it a billion times. So she wouldn't be doing all, all this stuff. Like, she'd just be going, oh, yeah, I've done this before. <laughs> like, I'm a hero. Like, right, right. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, the, the animation doesn't match with the character. Now, this, as I said, I'm going to say, again, it's beautifully, beautifully animated. I just think Hjelti's concentrated on the finer details, and which is really fun to animate. You're like, I'm going to make this shot really, really awesome. But if you take a step back, you're like, 
oh, this is a shot that belongs in a different film. Mm. Like, we should use a different reference. Right. Um, something that suits the, the story more, not like something that's got more detail in it where I can get into the nitty-gritty and have a lot of fun, right. fun animating. Does, it, does that make sense? Yeah, what, absolutely. What absolutely. And there's a lot of footage of, of uh, Yofti actually animating this shot and, you know, like, technical tips about like how he put rubber bands on his staff so he could reference like when where on the staff his hands were moving um so yeah i I agree with you that there's evidence for how much effort he put into the shot you as as far as her being an 11 year old girl kind of brings up another i think critique point um which to me is her character design and is she an 11 year old girl um because I don't know that it's communicated enough, but in the artwork from uh, David Revoir, I think is how you pronounce that, um, she looks a little older than an 11 year old girl. But I, that was one of my um, critiques is that she and her design, I think looks out of place in the world, um, especially her face, uh, given the amount of texture detail everywhere else in the whole short, um, her face is almost a solid, pale skin color with with no detail almost at all so they were trying they were definitely i think trying to be authentic to david's artwork but i think it got lost a little bit for me and and Mm. therefore i don't really know how old she is she definitely moves uh, differently than an 11 year old girl but yeah but it's like well i don't know how old she actually is just based on her design tim you had some thoughts about the character design right i just there, I just feel like there's nothing creative about her character design. <laughs> uh, it looks just like a hodgepodge of random. It like it has like a bandana. She has braids, but then it goes into a puff ponytail. She has two long sleeve sweaters on. It and she has like UGG boots. I was mm. like, I don't know where the character design elements come into play, but I, I would have liked it to reflect the world a bit more, especially if she's supposed to be a shepherd. Mm-hmm girl like that's the impression i was getting but i don't feel like her character design helped it at all and then i agree with you her her age was kind of ambiguous Mm -hmm. but i think the problem when you have such a cartoony looking face and you have like hyper realism hair it there's a disconnect i feel like they're not working together they're almost like fighting each other rather than complimenting yeah but yeah i do feel like her character design was like okay what do we think is a cool relatable young character and then like everyone puts in their opinion and there wasn't one clear settled idea. So you just took a bunch from each person and you ended up with this character that feels so blah to me. Hmm. There's, I don't, I, I know this might just be my opinion, but I just don't feel there's anything that stands out or is fascinating about her character design. Right. Right. Actually, we did have a question. Feel like, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I think that's another thing with the character design and the, then the animation is she's very stylized, like big head, big eyes. Um, and then the way that she moves, like it's animated very naturalistic and, and like they can work together because we've seen, you know, Pixar do it countless times or any, any of the studios do it countless times. But I think it, it just always stays in that really naturalistic, we're going to stick really close to our, our video reference and we're going to make it um, as close and as real as possible. But there's no like cartoony uh, wipes or like, you know, smears or, or, or anything, which a Pixar film would have those, even if, like, if you think about it, you know, Ralph Breaks the Internet or, you know, Wreck-It Ralph, those ones where you've got um, Penelope, big head, little body, like, they, those characters move very naturalistic, but then they also move cartoon-like. And I think if you choose your character somewhere in the middle, you have to do both both things. You know, you can't... It, it's just going to look weird if you stick 100% to naturalistic, and it's going to look weird if you stick to, you know, 100% cartoony when you're in a world that is so... Um, detailed and and visually stunning. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, and I, something I want to ask you guys is: Do you think the short would have worked better actually without the main character? Hmm. You mean like just the dog, or just without any main character? No, at all? without the dog or the girl. Like if the camera was like going into the forest, and then you see these giant creatures wake up if they're winter or spring or whatever, and then they're the ones that you know click on the rock, and then that changes it into fall, and it's like more of like a visual spectacle rather than this. I just I think you're right. I think Tim. I think Tim's cracked it. Like mm-hmm. I think he's cracked it through simplicity. It's like take out all the character animation, and it's just a, a visual journey. Like it's right. I think. I think. Yes, Tim. I think so. <laughs> That's really interesting. I've never thought of that, Tim, but I can definitely see the merit in 
Yeah, yeah, I definitely see the merit in that concept. It would have been, I think, more of a statement and less of a fitting in situation. Well, you know what the problem with that, though, would be is I feel like it wouldn't appeal to as many people then because there's not a character that's relatable that you can put yourself in their shoes and you can become that main character. So I feel like it would have been Hmm. um, less appealing in a way. That's true. Andy did mention in one of the one of the logs that uh, because someone in the chat was like, when are you going to ever do something more unique, more abstract or uh, stand out a little bit more? And and he responded in a in a way that's like, well, we've tried that in the past and you didn't like it, you know, so we are trying to be a little (laughs) more universal. And um, I think anyway, you should go check it out. I'm not quoting him or anything, but I know I'm like, oh, risks are scary. Don't ever take risks. (laughs) I mean, but you can see a little bit of the the logistics behind, like, if the Blender Institute is going to make just, uh, like, really unique things that are good but only appreciated by a few people, it's not going to serve the goal of exposing Blender's capabilities. Um, Because they're somewhere in the middle of, like, we're pushing Blender further along. We want to be and become a very uh, reputable, respectable uh, maker of film. But we always have to be pushing Blender forward. It's a, I'm sure there's tension, and that's that makes the budget reduce and stuff like that. But I don't. I guess I don't blame them for for trying to be a little bit mass appeal, as long as they don't only do that. You know, maybe the next one could be a little right. different. It's but. one of those things where I think that's why I get upset even with Pixar, because you saw in their early career that they were being original and unique, and then yeah, they weren't getting a lot of attention at first, especially with like Toy Story mm-hmm. and you know they bugs like the early early pixar but then when they really started getting into like monsters inc and wally and incredibles and then up and you just saw like them flourish Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden their creativity and originality was like heralded as the pinnacle of what animation should be and then all of a sudden disney i think really put a clamp on that like oh this can make money Mm -hmm. and i feel like all of a sudden you see the suppression of creative intention and you see not only sequels, but movies that I feel like Brave and Forward, I feel like were very uninspired Pixar movies. And you see a lot of the intention being mass appeal, money, uh, product sales. And I think that's where it comes to this pointing. But you are 100% correct, Kent, because the Blender Institute, they want to have the ability to make a bunch of these movies and you know to give money back into the software and fund better quality things. So maybe there is an intention on the back end or even a conversation of we can't be pushing our creative boundary and like be original as much as we need this to reach as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. And kind of like what you and Lampel said, if like a, a nice treat, you walk away with a smile and then you move forward. But will you get more eyes on it? Probably. Will it be remembered? I don't think so, mm-hmm. but I think that's a good point to bring up. Yeah. Um, Man, that's interesting. So a couple questions from the chat. I wanted, I wanted to get those answered. Uh, for one, mm. someone asked you, Tim, um, could uh, you give examples of how, how to stick out more? Like what, what could they have done? I mean, you already gave, give, given one, I think, about like if you take the character, the human characters out and just leave it a visual thing. So maybe that is your answer. Oh, Do you have anything I mean, else? Yeah. I feel like when it comes to visuals, I don't think we need to herald hyper-realism anymore as like the, the top quality. Mm-hmm. Where I'll, I think watching Into the Spider Verse made me realize animation can be so much more than hyper realism. Yeah. And I, I'm with you though, Kent. I'm also impressed when things can look super realistic, especially in animation. Mm-hmm. And I think there will always be some level of impression. But I think to really stand out, you have to have more than just uh, realism right, to right. help a film out. So I think, yeah, a stylistic choice would have helped. Agreed. Let me let out this dog while you guys discuss. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. I when I do watch Blender films, I think I look at them differently than other animation studios. There's always a part of, of technical achievement that I'm hoping for in the film, and I, that I think they did achieve a realism that they hadn't yet. And so it's almost like now that they've achieved that, you can surpass it and you like evolve past it and and start to uh, get a little more creative. But I was glad I that they achieved. So. It. I mean, they're not like opposed, and I think they they style like they stylized the way like the plants looked and like things like that. So it seemed like there was a decent amount of not hyper realism. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't say they like quite hit completely realistic either. So I don't know. To me, it seemed like they, they hit a, a kind of a, a middle point 
um, right. where it wasn't like they were just going for realism. Mm-hmm. You know, like the shots of the close-up of the foliage when they show like the frost on the spiral plants and at the end with the flowers blooming, I thought those were gorgeous. Yeah. yeah that's funny how example. the thing that stood out to me the most could have been like visual demos or like tech demos and they had nothing to do with the actual story. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you're right. Cause I, I, I did hear Andy talk somewhere where they were talking about those. Sh- Sorry for the, the, can you guys hear the construction? <laughs> it's all right. We're real people. <laughs> that Jack come out right out my window. It's, it's crazy. But I will put this. Um, so if you, I, I heard Andy talk about how um, some of those shots, like the, the icicles and the um, the things, that were some of the first shots that they did before the story was oh. like finalized. So I think you are right, Tim, where they were the vis- they were the tech demo parts that just got put in there. And for me, that, I think they were visually impressive, but then it did like, when I zoomed out and had a look at it, you're like, oh, they, they kind of really didn't have anything to do with the story. Mm-hmm. Like it would have been nice if they had have had, like at the start particularly, like, showing that ice but then in the background the character walks past just blurred or whatever just to connect connect those two because mm-hmm. otherwise it does just feel like hey here's a tech demo we've got these ice material look how it's working in in cycles 2.2.8 mm-hmm. uh, here is the uncurling look at look how oh we've got the smoke working now so it did feel like a bit tech demo but i think uh, a lot of people are looking for that like kent is, is like oh i want to see what what 2.8 can can do but they could have attach it more to the story but yeah yeah i i look i'm glad that we went over elephant's dream because that to me was an example of like pushing the creative boundaries and i'm sure there were technical boundaries pushed too but it was critiqued heavily on the technical achievement and how poor like the animation especially was like painfully bad to watch um and so yeah i, I guess just to support that idea that I, there's always a bit of tech demo in these things and I think they're getting they're going to get to a point where they have have proven to the world that Blender can do everything technically that that any other studio can do and now we can maybe put more effort into the artistry. Um one qu- quick question I saw from pe- from the chat was Omar is asking uh, how much out of 10 do we do each of us give give the film? Ooh. Uh Tim you go first. <laughs> ah, don't do a sandwich technique. Do a good review first. <laughs> Jonathan first. <laughs> Uh, my initial impression when I first watched it, I would have given it a seven. Okay. Which is the most non-committal of all of the numbers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what if you can't choose seven either side? Which if I'm going to put you on the fence. Well, well you... you didn't say that first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it now. <laughs> uh, then I'd give it a, a six and a half. Six. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wayne, well, I would, you? If, overall, I would give it probably a five. But there's certain things, like if you break it down into the different parts, like the music, I would give um, a 9 out of 10. I think it was pretty spot on. Uh, I do think, although when it related to sound, some of those voiceover things at the start, kind of, you know, there was just the sounds and like, hey, playing with the dog. They just kind of, they were at the start and then they disappeared and they weren't really part of the, the, the story or the, or the film after that. So I think the voiceover stuff I give maybe, maybe a 4. Like, because uh, I think it should have been either not in it at all or throughout the whole thing. The character animation, I'd give maybe, I think because it doesn't match, I'd give maybe uh, maybe, maybe a six. Uh, and the story, I think, is, is a little bit weak. I'd, I'd give that maybe maybe a four, three or a four. And then I think the visuals, I think, are great. I'd give that maybe an eight, an eight out of ten. I think the visuals are pretty good. Mm-hmm. But overall, five. Yeah. All right, I'll go. Uh, I would st- I would give it kind of like Lampel said I would have given it like a seven initially, and if we're leaning I would say seven point five as far as a lean. I did think it was a nice. I enjoyed it in general, and though all of you had extremely good points, very valid, even that I thought of, but just not negatively. Like I can relate to. I still I still will en- enjoy it. Like I'll watch this again, and I think I will enjoy it. Um, so yeah, I would land. 7.5 probably in my opinion knowing like that they're trying to be tech demo trying to you know understand the full context other motivations rather than just being held up as a great animation studio um so yeah i'd give it a 7.5 tim 
I guess something that, I mean, this could be a whole nother discussion is I, I talk to my friends about what makes a good movie and the argument gets brought up a lot is if it entertained people, does it mean it's a good movie? And I feel like with this short, if it left you with a happy feeling, does that mean it's a good animation mm-hmm. short? And I think that's what most animation shorts are meant to do is like leave you with like a smile. And I think since I kind of judge things very, um, I don't want to say unbiased, but I don't feel like I have allegiances to anything. So I yeah. feel like since, especially with uh, a lot of people that are watching this are like blender diehards. I feel like I can come into this and be as honest and like critical as I can. Mm-hmm. And I do want to bring up, I, I, showed you guys before this started, but I caught a screenshot of when the staff actually went invisible when she was putting the weird stick thing into her staff. And for someone like me, who I'm not a 3D person, I'm not an animation person, I just draw for a living. That's all I do. And I feel like if I notice this, there's got to be other people that notice this. And I feel like it was a really sloppy edit where there was a frame or two missing of the, the staff wasn't even missing. It was there, but it was like 90% opacity missing. And it, it just throws me off in that way. So I guess for me, in terms of my reaction to it, and I feel like I do judge a little bit on how original it is because of how much I have seen in the past, mm-hmm. I would probably give it a four. Yeah. And I, I do think this is one that I'll forget by next week. And even as I, we were talking to Wayne before this began, I mean, he forgot that he watched it the same day. And I think it's just a testament to how this this little short film doesn't do anything outside of showing the new capabilities of Blender. So if you're in the Blender community, I think you will be a little more more biased on wanting to like it and appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. But as someone that I think for myself just sees it as purely a film construct, I don't think it does too much to heighten um, the film industry in general of like me watching it as a viewer. Right. I actually really love having you on um, these short f- these reviews because you are, <laughs> are you that. Sure? No, I, I, no, absolutely, I do. Even when That's part of the fun. This is probably the most in maybe disagreement or or um, further apart we've ever been in in our in the past reviews. But because you're not connected to Blender, you are connected to us because you worked with us and we have a good relationship and can talk about this stuff. Um, that's why I really like having you because you're you're not going to be you're definitely not going to be the Blender fanboy. I can slip in and out of that, you know, fully admit it. Um, but I like that you bring that extra uh, objectivity to the discussion. And um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm I love the way that we have talked in different opinions this <laughs> this episode. Um, but I, I do want to make a note though. I feel like I don't want to, you know, I don't want people with the impression that you should go into things looking for things to critique and like things to belittle in animation. Cause when I went into this film and it had that drop and it made the noise on that little wood uh, thing, yeah. I, I was like, Oh, like that was, I was not impressing that or I was not expecting that. <laughs> and I like feeling immersed in what I'm watching. And I feel like that's when I'm really like pulled and I'm moved. But when I'm taken out of it and especially with like things that are either cliches or things that are predictable or don't seem to connect, like with Wayne talking about the, animation i feel like that's when you get pulled out of watching anything immediately it's hard to go back in it's hard to re-immerse yourself into something right so right. for me if i'm watching something and i'm pulled out pretty early it's hard for me to like dive back in and really feel the connection and by the time the dog thing happened i was like i i don't even feel sad at this point <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, the staff disappearing i'm showing your screenshot right now i i don't know how that slipped through um, right. there's like no excuse. Happen? Yeah. I do, I do not understand. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. And it's crazy. I didn't notice it, but you, you, you have a radar for that stuff, man. Um, all right. So let's He's see. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, uh, Omar, you're asking, is anyone wondering how they manage those scenes with so much geometry? I think we can start to segue into, um, mm. more, some more technical things like, uh, the Blender stuff, um, you know, we already talked a lot about the quality of animation, quality of, we've touched on these things, but I would be interested if, um, uh, to talk about some of those. So I would start, I guess, because Tim, you mentioned that it didn't strike you as stunningly, uh, stunningly, as, as stunningly visual to you. Um, so I guess Tim uh, Lampel, maybe, I feel like if anyone would, would agree with me, um, I do feel like the, the attention to detail and um, again, leaning towards realism, the the attention to to detail that goes into realism, I think, was reached a new level with this short. 
um, from the quality. I, I just think uh, Julian Casper, who apparently, I still have a hard time believing this, but did all, if, if not the vast majority of modeling and shading on the whole project, one dude. Um, I think he just nailed it. And he apparently didn't even do environments before this short, before this project, which is crazy. But yeah, I think they just reached a level of detail uh, that they hadn't before. Would you agree with that, Lampel? Yeah, especially with the environment and whatnot, like like the ground and all the debris sitting around and things like that. I think it really took it up a notch. Um, the plants, foliage, right. all of that. Um, I feel like when the big creatures had their like feet right next to the ground, there was a little bit of like disconnect in detail where like the ground was super detailed, but like they weren't as much. Mm -hmm. So there's like a little bit of difference there. Um, but overall, like, yeah, it was definitely more detailed than past film. Right. So, that's it. Yeah. Um, there was one, maybe you notice this too, but when the, when the legs of the creatures pull up out of the ground, the, the animation on the, on the rigid body Sims, I think looked awesome. But uh, let me see if I can find that part. But all the pebbles looked really round. Did you notice that? Like they didn't look like sh like little bits of actual rocks. It looked like, you know, round pebbles that were all kind of the same it's size. Funny, it's funny what we noticed because I noticed that um, all the animation was repeated. Like, and I know, okay, they're all the same creatures, so they would be the same. But they all lifted their their legs up and then they went in the same in the same way and then. <laughs> Interesting. It was, all, it was all. That's what I noticed. I'm like, ah, oh, okay, so they're. They're repeating the animation, which is sometimes, you know, it, it, it's good, but you can't just tweak it a little bit. So they're, okay, they're all doing the same thing, but they're not like doing exactly the same, <laughs> right. the same thing. But you notice the pebbles, I noticed, I noticed their toes. <laughs> right. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I didn't notice the animation at all. It's different levels of like immersion that I feel like we experienced in this one. Um, let's see. Anything else? Uh, what? So yeah, we, have we talked? Have we not talked about anything t like technically in Blender? Um, like anything more animation-wise, Wayne? That you besides like her moving less like an eleven-year-old girl and the the duplicate in animation? Um, did anything else bother you or or stick out as being good? Oh yeah, there's there's heaps of um, great stuff, and like I said, um, all of those uh, shots are well animated. They're just not right for this particular um short right, right. Uh, if you want to get a little bit nitpicky i think there's there's some of the physics that that feel a little bit wrong with the scale like in the very first shot where you see um the dog who's now called autumn and spring and she's throwing the stick like on top of the mountain at the start if you watch that that stick feels really slow like it's it's scale really big and it's going like a mammoth way it's like when you throw a stick off a really big mountain, it just seems to glide forever. Um, so I think the scale there of the animation is a little bit weird, but I, I, I let that go because, uh, you know, it's an animation and it's there to prove a point. You don't want to be physically accurate because the audience is going to miss what it is, especially when it's a tiny little stick on screen. Right. Um, but the shot after that, I'm just going from memory now because I can't see your screen, is the, the dog walking down the hill. Um, I love the way you can see its butt move and the tail has lots of nice uh, overlap that's uh, that's some really good animation there uh, when when spring is running down the hill this is another criticism like I think there's three or four shots of her running down the hill and she feels a little bit like she's she's level like going oh like running down the hill like like this <laughs> like her legs are, uh, are stuck which is it's a really difficult thing to do right, um, yeah. because you want to show the ups and downs but if the camera is like like what you're seeing on my screen, and the and the and the the character is doing this, it's really really distracting. So you do want to keep it level, but I just feel like she's 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 running a, a little bit like this. Oh, I'm running down the hill. I'm running down the hill. Um, so that I think was probably something where they couldn't get good reference for. So they just tried to I don't know make it up, but they could have just I don't know tweaked it a little bit to make it a little bit more visually interesting. And so uh, like I wouldn't notice and go, oh, that looks like she's gliding right that was one of the things i did pick up on too that this i'm going over it right now but yeah she's totally gliding uh, in a in her desperate run um that's a good critique for sure yeah and then also in that same spot 
like uh, we mentioned before, that weird stick thing, mm. it just feels like it's it's going in a perpetual motion type thing. There's no reaction to hitting the ground and changing momentum based upon um, the real physics. It just looks like, oh, yeah, it's cartwheeling down the hill at a, at a linear fashion, right. uh, which I'm willing to forgive as well because you yeah, it's like a story. You don't need to be, oh, well, no, it's going to hit at this angle, so angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, so it's going to bounce this way, and then the wind is going to catch it. But let's think about the temperature, and that's going to affect the way that it moves. <laughs> like, you know, you don't want to get that detail. You're just like, we need to make this shot work. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, but I guess if you put, like, little, like, bursts as it hits the ground, then that could, like, add, like, oh, something else is happening here, and that, like, perfect. it, it could be fun. something completely nondescript, but it'll say, like, oh, there's more to this than, like, what would normally happen. Mm, right. Um, Omar, he was asking about how they manage the scenes with so much geometry. One thing that surprised me when looking at the, the development logs is that they did not apparently use, um, oh, what's it called, adaptive subdivision, which I thought for sure they would have used it, considering how close we get to these feet. I thought I thought they would have been using that like crazy, um, but they did not. So that this is like pure um, subdivision-based uh, displacement, um, I assume, that's happening. Um, but yeah, so anyway, like I, I think that's how they reduced a lot of geometry, whereas if they had used sub, uh, adaptive subdivision, the, the geometry calculations would have been crazy. Probably they figured that out, uh, out early on and, and did not uh, go that direction. But considering that, I think they achieved a level of, again, I'm, I'm going to hit a lot on the level of detail they achieved uh, without having adaptive subdivision is pretty impressive to me. Um, all the pebbles and stuff all over the ground, I think, uh, was really a, a nice touch as well. Um, I can think back to the other shorts where they did not put that level of detail into the into the ground planes and stuff. Um, let's see. Anybody else have any notes on like technical things that stuck out to them? Uh, the one technical thing that stuck out to me the most was the smoke. So I don't know if you wanted oh, to. Oh yes. If you plan to talk about that at all or not. Um, I, I did not, well, I was going to talk about the creature, the alpha creature in general, and since they're enveloped in smoke, I think that makes sense. Um, what'd you think? Good smoke? Bad smoke? Um, it was okay. It hasn't really upped, upped its game at all in the past few years. Yeah. Like, no developments there. Um, so yeah, because even, uh, so if you go all the way to the front, and oh, this is something that's like, obviously difficult to do, and it's pretty limited to exactly what the what the simulator can do. Um, but you can see that it hasn't really been upgraded. Because if you go to about 35 seconds in, there's a shot of like the mountain with it like behind. Yeah. And you can actually see like individual like voxels. <laughs> like it's it's a really low res. Oh, and wow. obviously this has to be like a massive simulation in order to like get all the way around this mountain and stuff. Um, That's but crazy. you can see that it's not quite there hmm. like it's it's not to the level of detail that you could get in houdini or sure. something like that that is um, true and even when it like the creatures come out like it's just it's all very like soft and fluffy and mm -hmm. but it it's, has a very distinct lack of detail that just doesn't quite hold up to the rest of the environment that's a good point that's a very good critique it is very soft. That's a good word for it. Um, I mean, at this resolution, I can't quite see the voxels, but I'm sure at full res, like, you're absolutely that right. That's what you're looking at there looks looks pretty darn good. Yeah. Because it doesn't, like, it's very, like, wispy, and that looks good. But uh, go towards more, like, 601. 601. I do think when they're in the fog, the basin, oh, not basin, but the, like, riverbed, I think the fog works because everything's kind of foggy, so it works a little bit better to be soft. But yeah, when yeah. it's in the pure sunlight, where did you say 607 or something? Uh, 60, 601, 602. Yeah. Yeah, where it needs to be really like dense, it just yeah. doesn't work. That's true. When they're in the when they're in the uh, full sunlight, it, it does fall apart a little bit. Um, there, um, yeah. Going, yeah. Right about there. Yeah. That's a, yeah. That's good. I I feel for Andy because I think he's he's by far the best uh vfx person you know at the studio and i he he talks like he spends hours and hours and days like tweaking this to to their ex absolute maximum 
uh, capability. Oh, it would take that for sure. Oh yeah. So it'd be awesome if we get some some smoke um, fluid updates. Well, we've got, um, I mean, like like a vapor fluid is what I mean. Um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think that's about it for the. I don't have anything else. I don't think on the technical side. Um, we've also been going for an hour and a half. Any last words? Maybe we can wrap it up. Oh, wait, there's a question below. Hold on a second. Um, Miranda, I would love to hear Wayne's assessment of the creature animation, dog and big uh, creatures. What do you think, Wayne, it, about the creatures? Well, there's some really great uh, stuff about, uh, let's talk about the creature animation. My favorite bit about the creature animation is the, the legs, where the legs kind of crack open. I think the spacing on those shots, uh, I don't know whether Kent can pull it up or not, like, I think that was really effective, especially when you add the sound to that. You're like, yes, that's, that's really awesome. Which, um, which part again? The one again. that I... After the first alpha okay. comes alive, um, you, see, you see the foot come, come up, it does its little toe thing, uh, and then they cut to a shot that's looking up, and you see the knees kind of crack and come alive. Oh, yeah. Um, I really like the spacing on that. Yeah. When you add that with the sound, beautiful. Um, but as for all of the spider things when they're, when they're walking up, I think the legs are very, um, the spacing gap before the ground, I'm speaking because I know uh, Miranda knows a lot about animation because she's gone through the, the animation course, but I think the spacing closest to the ground is always, it's a little bit too poppy. So the legs come up and they go, oh, yeah. every single time. I think it's, um, I think it's okay to, to have that and, it's, and as you know the spacing gap towards the ground should be the biggest if you're accelerating towards the ground that is um, but I think it's always the same and it's too pronounced so it makes it everything stick out so it kind of looks like I'm slow I'm slow I'm slow I'm fast uh, I'm slow and big and heavy I'm light like it's do you know what I mean when yeah. something's big and you're slower so there, yes. there needs to be a little bit it's just a, it's just a spacing tweak there um, and to make not every step look the same. Hmm. Um, yeah, that, that's my critique on the big, the big animation. But it's the big monster animation. It's funny though because most of it is hidden behind the, behind the, the fog. So I would love that. I'll be, I'll be like scratching my head, going, "How am I going to animate all these monsters?" And it's like, "Oh, don't worry, Wayne. They're all hidden." I'll be like, "Beautiful. I'm done." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I that shot. <laughs> um, so you... <laughs> uh, the, dog, the dog animation, I think um, it does feel a little bit stop motiony in comparison to spring at times. Uh, so I think it might be, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there no motion blur in Blender 2.8? Is that, uh, does that seem right to you guys? There is. There's there there. is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if I it think... was always there, but there is now. Yeah, okay. So there is, there is now. Like, I just, the, the dog sometimes feels very stop motiony, and that, especially when comparing it to the, the animation style of, um, of Spring, because she's very naturalistic. They're using a lot of reference, and they're sticking really, really, really close to that reference, which is okay. It depends on what, uh, what type of animation that you're going for. But then the dog, they obviously can't get reference for the for the dog, and it's even more stylized. Like the size of that dog's head is about the size of the body. So it's like, okay, you're going to have to tweak this animation, and it's got tiny little little legs. So you have to make some compromises with like how naturalistic that you can go. Um, right. So yeah, I think the comparison between the two looks looks a little bit off. Uh, but I do like a lot of the dog animation. And it gets back to what Tim was saying about cliches. There's one cliche that I would have loved to have seen that the dog do. Um, and then at the end, after it's all like, they nearly got squashed, but they didn't. And then Spring looks down and goes, oh, where is, where is Autumn? And then she looks the other way. And it's like, it's like going Grr! at the, at the alpha's foot, or actually it's probably not an alpha, it's probably a beta. Um, <laughs> so I would have liked to have seen the dog cock its leg and do a little bit of a, a, a urinate on the, on the, on the tree. Uh, that is very cliche. I think there would have been a moment where you go, oh, this is a tech demo. We get to do a cliche gag, which everyone kind of laughs at. It's like, it's on the same level as the fart joke. It's like, <laughs> fart joke, not funny. Uh, but then you also have to test all the, the fluid simulation. So you go, oh, look, look at us doing this fluid, fluid sim. Now you don't need to. <laughs> You're not wrong. 
It's like demo and gag rolled into one. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the, the dog um, did bother me. You were mentioning it felt a little stop motion-y. Um, I agree with that. And I don't know if there's motion blur on fur. Do you know, Lampel, if there is? Ooh, that I don't know. Okay, because the dog obviously being covered in fur, which is maybe a point to critique about his design. Um, but yeah, there is an element of uh, stop motion. And I, I feel like watching, because when you were talking about that clip at the beginning, um, like that clip especially feels stop motion y. And I think it has to, a little bit to do with the fur. I don't think that's motion blurred properly. Right. Or maybe even, that would make sense. or even like simulated properly because hair sim like this is not. Not, not, Blender's not known for doing that too well. Um, anyway, yeah, that's a good point. What did you, Tim, do you have any thoughts on the design of the dog and, and how they, uh, how it ended up? Because I, yeah. I have some points. <laughs> uh, I mean, to me, it's just Toto with a big head. I, like I said, I just don't think it was inspired in any facet for the two characters, which is complete contrast to where the creatures I thought were great. I thought they were wonderful, mm -hmm. especially when you first meet them and they're so ominous in the smoke and you see the light. I know we've kind of seen that with like spaceships and even as like Prometheus, but I feel that this, this little short actually did a good job with the reveal of the creature because you felt its presence. Right. And then as it went along, I feel like that presence was kind of lost, especially when you see them in the sun and they look kind of goofy. <laughs> right. In, in my mind, it, like, it lost that cool, ominous feel. Then they became kind of like caricatures of themselves. Huh. But um, the dog itself, I, I, I think it goes along with what we were saying earlier where they put in these very cartoony looking characters against a very, or they tried to go for a more like realistic tone everywhere else. And I, I do feel like they felt out of place. Right. I felt very, it was very difficult to focus on the dog. Like any shot that the dog was in, my brain had to do too much work too quickly to really understand what was going on. And they mentioned that the original design, they were going to cover the eyes, you know, like that kind of, I think, I feel like a stereotypical dog with long hair, eyes are covered. Oh. Um, and they decided to pull that back so that they could get a little more emotion. So I think that they did probably struggle with, with making the dog read. But the combination of the long hair, dark color on dark backgrounds, um, yeah, I think the dog is an unfortunate like loss. I think it just a lot of good work that's being lost in the final result. I feel like um, we did have a couple questions. Uh, There's one question that I can answer. Uh, it was by Omar, and it was how did they do the uh, melting ice icicles? Oh yeah, and I don't know exactly how, but I went back and like watched that shot. And one way that you could do it is essentially just sculpt an icicle and then use shape keys to like shrink it up um, and then use a displacement modifier and then animate the texture like just slightly so that it like warps just a little bit. And then there's just some particles coming off the bottom. Mm. And that's those three things together. It'll, that'll do it. There you go. Looking at that scene closely, it looks like I love the bubbles that they put in the icicle. I just did yeah. a project about icicles and did not. I, they look I, really good. Yeah, the bubbles look awesome. They're not actually moving with the. Um, I guess they wouldn't. They would if you're if the icicles mm -hmm. shrinking. No, they're frozen in ice, so that's probably why they're not moving. Cle that's that's impressive. That was gonna be a critique, and now it's just a thumbs up. Nice touch. Um, <laughs> nice. Let's see. There was a couple more questions. Uh, Omar, is there concept art published? Yes, there is. Uh, on Blender Cloud, you can find a lot of um, a lot of their artwork. I should have included some of that in the presentation, but um, uh, definitely. Uh, Eves Pereira, uh, I managed to get to a live stream. A question for you: There was a live stream scheduled, but then canceled about talking about 2.8 new features and development UI with Jonathan Williamson. Oh yeah, that was uh, gosh, I feel like that was over a year ago. Um, we could I can talk to him again. Uh, I mean, 2.8 is coming soon. We're recording all of our fundamentals. So if if, you, if you're interested in 2.8 and, and the UI and stuff, you're going to be getting a lot of that uh, information, whether it's in a live stream or not. But um, I can I can mention it to him. He might be one willing thing, to do that. One thing they, that uh, they might be interested in is the um, is Pablo Vasquez's um, weekly um, YouTube videos that he does about the w weekly updates. Because yeah. I know Kent, you follow those those ones as well. And he, they've just moved it over. It's um, what, what does he call it, Kent? It's the the uh, Blender Today. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, it used so to be called Blender Today. Um, it's YouTube. now on the official Blender YouTube site, uh, where every week uh, Pablo talks about 
the updates for that week. And they've been really hey great guys, and welcome for to- showing you week to week what, what's been updated, what's, what's changed in Blender 2.8 and the reasons behind it. Like you might be, like it's been really difficult for us as instructors because we've actually recorded quite a lot of content for 2.8 and then before we get it released, everything in 2.8 has changed. Um, and then you watch these things from Pablo and they're, they're explaining why and stuff like that. So we've actually taken the, the, our foot off the pedal for 2.8 until it's stable, until we can get some more content out there. But if you're itching, um, itching to get started, watch his, his um, weekly um, YouTube videos because then you'll see exactly what's coming up and all the cool new features yeah. um, until we get actually um, tutorials and content that's going to actually help you use all this stuff. Yes. I'm looking at the YouTube channel right now. It's called Blender Today Live. Um, they start at 57 because they did 56 episodes on his other channel. But uh, they, they do these every Monday, usually Monday. I think today's was Tuesday. Um, they did one today. But uh, check that out for sure for like weekly updates on the Blender 2.8 from someone on the scene. Um, uh, Rita is asking, is the, is the dog unafraid of the spirits in this film? I kind of feel like yes. There's no indication that the yeah. dog's afraid of him. Um, very confident dog. Um, all right, I think that that's it. Uh, yeah, we've been going on for a while now. So the last thing, it, it, does anyone have any last thoughts about the film? Tim's gone. Tim's no, gone. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> the dog was barking at me outside. Wait, <laughs> the dog is afraid of the What? Oh yeah, I was saying that the dog was afraid of the alphas. So I didn't <laughs> need to go. I mean, as I'm looking at the concept art for what was before or after watching the short, I definitely think they cut some things that would have helped the film a lot. I mean, even just the shot of that little cottage mm-hmm. of her like coming out of it. They even show an interior shot, which looks pretty cool. But it shows her, and it shows potentially an old version of Spring, which is like a grandmother or something. So her, kind of like what you were saying, Wayne, of her passing on the lineage of yeah. you know, and the, the, what you're supposed to do. But I think as a, a whole, I'm like I said, I'm always excited to do these critiques with you guys. I'm so glad that Blender is pushing out these animation films. I know it probably sounds like I am not, but I actually am. And I think the more that I watch them, the more I get excited because I know how much for Blender as a whole, it's been trying to like put its flag down of like, we are just as good as any other 3D software. Mm-hmm. And I have personally thought it, it has been for a while. I don't, I don't think it needs to necessarily prove anything at this point. I think it, it can stand up with the big dogs. Mm-hmm. But I think with this movie, it, it definitely is more appeasing to a mass audience. And I don't think they went for uh, anything creatively. I think they went to a tech demo that included Characters really just to throw the viewer into their shoes. I don't feel like they played much of a role. So unfortunately for me, I don't think it worked as well, but I'm so excited that they're still doing this and I, I, I will continue watching them. Yeah, but it's hard to say like, oh, it's like just a tech demo because like Unity tech demos, at least recently, have been like super creative and really interesting. Right? That's what even like a uh, Square Enix did one for their new engine, and it looked amazing, but it didn't really have like a story that was digestible. It was very much like quick things happening really fast, and they were very impressive. So for me, I feel like it it didn't really hit a mark on like being very impressive visually, except for like those little moments. And then as a story, I don't think it really held its ground on anything, mm-hmm. to be honest. So I don't know. That's where it falls short for me, but yeah. I know. I, it, it will leave a lot of people with a smile. So I guess in the end, it did do its job. It entertained people, and it will get a lot more eyes on it because of its um, accessibility, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I um, I feel like a, a, lot, a lot of their films are from artists that they have working there that want to try directing. I think Andy is... This was his first directing experience, I think. Um, so if, if for being that, I think he did an incredible job. Like the organization of mm-hmm. actually making a production like this come to fruition, I think is very, very difficult. Um, so kudos to him, but it, it would be nice if maybe now that we've, I think we've achieved, Blender has achieved technical, um, impression, technical, being impressive technically. Um, I would love to see people not known for their blendering, but for but known for their filmmaking to, to get involved a little bit more. Um, and even Colin Levy, who I think is becoming a very good director, started as a 3D, 
I think he was mostly a 3D artist um, when he started out, like out of college, first getting started. He didn't start as a director. So he's an example of that can definitely happen and be successful. Um, but like if, with Cosmos Laundromat, I want to say that Matthew Avre, I can't remember how to pronounce his name. He was more of a writer, director, like creative that happened to do a little bit of Blender if I recall correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that short did have more of a film with a capital F kind of quality to it, in my opinion. So anyway, um, we, a couple more questions from Tobol, Tobol's. I'd like to know if uh, the little leaf on her stick was made with a claw simulation or something um, that would be rigged or animated. Wayne, what do you think? Was that claw sim when it, when the... I think no, uh, that would have been animated. Yeah. Knowing knowing Helgi, that would have been hand animated, and he would have he would have step he, he would have animated on step frames on every two frames, and then he would have gone to the middle frame and animated on that. So it would have been animated on every every single frame. Holy cow! Uh, that's so, so it, specific. It's actually I, I know that that's that's how Helgi would have done it. But uh, I think it would be really easy to have it as geometry. Mm -hmm. So it's just little little FK chains mm -hmm. like. And you wouldn't do that first, you do that last. So after you've got everything done, you just go in there and you'd, you'd get in there and you'd animate it. Um, of course, you only need to animate it on the frames where it's visible. Um, and that way, you know, you don't need to do the whole thing. But yeah, I don't think they would have um, done sim on that because I think that would have been more trouble uh, than it's worth. Like sometimes it's easier just to do it the hard way because you know you're going to get exactly what you want rather than trying to fight with the simulation and go, oh, no, we've got to run that thing again and we've got to, we've got to render all those frames again because something went wrong. The, the, the cloth sim exploded yeah. and now we need, to, we need to render those frames again. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That would have been my guess um, for sure. That would just be really a nightmare to do with cloth sim. But yep. uh, Omar, I think this is the last question. He's got another one actually. Um, so does this mean it's the worst Blender movie to date? What do you think? No. I no, say so. no, 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 no. I think it's got, like, I, I think it sounds like Tim and I are really uh, overly critical or harsh on it. But as Tim said and myself, like, we actually like it. We want it to succeed and, and stuff. Um, it's just, it's a little bit pity that it didn't hit the expectations of, of my mind, especially in those like Tim said, that first opening couple of seconds where, you, where the thing drops down and it cuts and you go, whoa, this is, this is really, really impressive. And then you go, oh, maybe not. And then later in the day, you forget that you've watched it and someone asks you and you go, oh, no, I haven't. Oh, no, I have watched that. I was going to say that I haven't. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think it takes people like Tim and Wayne, uh, both objective in Tim's case, like doesn't have any real connection to Blender, and Wayne, who has a strong connection to Blender, to to push the movies forward, push the animation studio forward with with critiques like this. Um, because, you know, in my case, I liked it and I, I, you know, I kind of left it. I didn't like dwell on it for the rest of the day. You know, it didn't really make me do that. But like all I said is congratulations, good job, great work. And that's yeah. nice to hear, but it doesn't like push forward uh, the movement or, or the, the efforts in the future. So yeah, if you want to push forward, like I think you're right, um, Ken, is, is you hire someone from outside of the Blender community who is known for their directing mm -hmm. to direct it and go, here is our story, um, let's make it. So then, then their objective, they're not like, oh, let's try and do what Blender can do best. Mm -hmm. They're just, let's make this story, let's make it great, and then everyone else supports that. And they're like, oh, technical aspects, oh, we can't do this, let's try and, we need to make, make Blender be able to do this, this would be great if we can do that. Uh, I think it's great to have the outside influence, just like they did with the music, like they outsourced source the music to someone who was professionally known right. for doing that exact same thing. It wasn't say, um, like this does have a feel of like, oh, this is our lighting guy who made, who made a short film. He, it's his first time directing. And when you have that, when you consider that, you go, oh, it's really, really great. But they have the ability, they have the money, they have the funding to go and hire a, 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 a I was going to swear, but like a really good, I was going to say a swear word, that means really good, uh, director to actually to do that. Um, do, do, that, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I, I, I think they'll, I feel like they've got to do that in the future. They've got to do that more. I really hope they do, because yeah. I think that's what will um, propel Blender forward. And I think they need to dial back on the, oh, hey, we made this with Blender. We made this with Blender. Because if you're always trying to be 
the, the red-headed stepchild and trying to fit in with everyone, that's how you're going to be seen. Mm. But if you just go, hey, I made this thing, and everyone goes, oh, wow. And then they go, oh, I was made with Blender. Oh, what is Blender? Oh, wow, it's free. If they discover it that way, like you don't turn off the people uh, from hearing that all that. Blender is the best. Blender yeah. is the best. Like it's better than Maya. Like Maya, you can yeah go <laughs> jump off the bridge. Right. Like if you gonna attack them like that, people are like, oh, you know, I'm not, right. I'm not interested. Right. But if you just go, I'll make this awesome thing. People are gonna be like, oh yeah, yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. If I go ahead. Oh, really quick, I just want to say, I think it also comes down to the context of, like, the day and age we're in today, where I think Sintel came out, what was that, like, late zero 2010? Maybe 2010, yeah. Because I remember watching that in college, yeah, and at that time, Blender was seen as kind of like the joke of the 3D community, and I remember mm-hmm. when that came out, that really did push not only Blender forward, but I feel like uh, people were taking it not only seriously, but the story people connected with a lot more. So then w- comparing that one to this one... I actually do think Sintel had more of a punch where this one I felt like it was playing it safe, where I think Sintel had something to prove where this one felt like it was trying to fit in, which I think that's where, for me, it, it pulls back. But I don't think it's the worst. I mean, I've seen Elephant's Dream, and I've seen some of the <laughs> other ones where I think big ambitions, but they just did not have the quality at the time to match it. So, no, I would not consider this yeah. the worst one. Uh, one. One positive thing, like most of all the other Blender um, films that they've done, I've always thought, wow, this is way too long. Like, um, Big Buck Bunny was probably my favourite uh, short film, even though it goes for 12 minutes or something like that. Wow. And, like, at the time, 2007 maybe, 2008, I don't know, around, around then, I was a lot younger in my career and was really inspired by that. You're like, wow, this is, this is unbelievably amazing. Fast forward a couple of years, you look at it again, you go, oh, like, it's, it, it's, it's still used, like that, those images, Big Buck Bunny, are used for, because it's... Um, Creative Commons, it's, those images are still used around everywhere, um, but the story, 12 minutes, you're like, oh no, like, that really should be a two minute short film, <laughs> like, they've, they've stretched it, they've, every one of the films have stretched out really long, this one didn't feel like it was seven minutes and 45 seconds, it felt um, oh yeah, like, it, it didn't feel too long or too short, it, it just the story um, came up a little bit short for me, so I think they nailed the length but just, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's clear what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For sure. Good critiques all around. Um, yeah, and I would agree. Definitely not the worst uh, Blender Open movie, in my opinion. Um, a couple more questions, and then we will we will wrap things up. Uh, Omar says, watching Wayne's animation courses, you also get to see his T-shirt collection. Is it okay if we <clears throat> ask you where you got it when we see a cool one? <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the cool ones that are from threadless.com. Uh yeah, mo- most of them are. Nice. But now I'm, but now I'm a dad. I don't. Tr- I'm trying to wear less cool t-shirts. I'm trying to be. This is why this one's just plain. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you had an answer like right away. <laughs> I've got to, like, I'm, I know I'm a good dad because I've got all the dad jokes worked out. Uh, so I'm just trying to transition into becoming a dad, and then I've got the dad transition complete. <laughs> Excellent. Congrats, by the way. Um, I'm becoming a dad very recently. Um, uh, let me. Let's see. What's there any other questions? Um, the family unit just arrived. So Tobles is asking about Tim, and I think Tobles is one of our newer members. Uh, so Tim, it, um, you probably don't know, he if you go to the concept part of CG Cookie, he taught like 90% of all of that. Hold on, let me close my door just a second. Tim, do you want to describe who you are? <laughs> um. Yeah, I did the concept side for CG Cookie for a long, long time. I mean, I initially got hired when CG Cookie was literally just Wes and Jonathan, and they needed concept work for Jonathan's ambitions, and I got brought on. And then I was so, (laughs) I'll use the word desperate. I was so desperate for any kind of job. I was like, let me prove my worth to you guys. Like, give me more to do, give me more. And eventually they had me doing tutorials as well, and then that's where the whole concept side of CG Cookie even came from. And then I did that for six years before eventually, well, it's kind of funny that CG Cookie is meant to train artists to become something more. And I feel like that's what happened where I took all I learned from CG Cookie and then I just put into the real world of what I could do. And so now I just, I'm a traveling independent artist. And I couldn't have done that without the springboard of CG Cookie. So I'm, I'm always very thankful. That's why I'm always super excited to come back to these type of things, connect with you guys again. Yeah, absolutely. 
He was asking for a link to your your book, your upcoming book. Is there a link anywhere? I, I'm at your Etsy page right now. Is that can be? Uh, no, don't go to my Etsy. Oh, whoops, whoops. Uh, the Kickstarter, I don't have it officially out until Friday. So the big launch is at 2 p.m. Okay, so, awesome. Yeah. There you go. So can people follow you? How do they how do they do that, Tim? Oh, add Honor. Such, I'll put it yeah. in the comments section. This is a big big opportunity. <laughs> I'm so bad at promoting myself. <laughs> I'm like, but I'm at Honor. Pretty much Instagram is the best way to get in touch with everything I do. Absolutely. It's a really good Instagram. You should follow him. He's a talented right. artist. <laughs> um, well, thank you. Absolutely, man. Let's see. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. So the last thing I wanted to do is I started doing little quizzes at the end of these uh, streams. So I got Ooh. five questions. You guys are welcome to answer uh, guests. Um, but for Hi. you in the chat, yeah, just five. Just, just five. Um, yeah. So get ready for, where is it? Some things. After, oh, spring quiz. Here we go. All right, so you guys should probably know by now the way this works. I'm going to read the question. You're going to decide on the answer. Try not to look at the chat because it's a, you know, a crowdsourced the right answer kind of situation. So okay. honor system. Um, but but when you see the quiz question, uh, post uh, in the chat what your answer is. And I'll count to 10, and we will do each question that way. So first one. And do we all comment at the same time? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I, I, during the 10 second countdown is when you, you type your answer. Um, so according to Andy in the first production log, how many individual shots are in spring? So these are pretty random. You're probably gonna be guessing. I didn't really go over these you know, necessarily in the stream, but whatever, it's, fu it's fun, it's for XP. So um, answer, answer A, uh, 93 shots. Answer B, 105. Answer C, 121. Answer D, 203. I actually have a little countdown timer. 10 seconds, start. Can we go rogue? Just choose a number that isn't one of those? You can. It, it won't be the right one. Do you, think, do you think I might be correct? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go rogue. Wait, one of them is the right answer. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> going rogue. I'm going to go E, 47. <laughs> I'm well, Wayne confident. definitely missed it. So the correct answer is B, 105. Now, that might have changed, but he definitely said 105 towards the beginning of production. And when he said the edit was like being rounded out to the final thing. Um, so if you answered B, you got that correct. Answer number, or uh, question two. How many Blender open movie projects have featured sheep in some form or another? <laughs> Every <laughs> single one. And they've all been depressed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is answer E if you if you want to answer that way. Uh, is it one, two, three, or four? You you guys are smart. You can figure that out. I will count to ten. I thought this was just interesting. Like sheep always mm -hmm. seem to appear frequently. So answer. Looks like a couple more are coming in. So there is. Three and this my yeah. So there's three in that you have um, Yo Frankie, which is the game project. And if you watch that video, there are sheep in that in that project. Oh there is Cosmos Laundromat, obviously about sheep, and especially the the original version of Condor, uh, Cosmos Laundromat was like sheep in many different forms. Um, and then yep. this one, Andy kept referring to the creatures as the sheep that spring shepherds, which. I never knew why I got Ooh, the name out. That's a stretch. <laughs> Look at, in the logs. In the logs, he, he refers to them multiple times as sheep, and, that, and they never had a name. So it's stretch, but whatever. It's for XP. This, ain't, that is, this is super important. All right, next. I would give anyone, anyone who got that wrong because that question was flawed, Kent. That was flawed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better at quiz making, but I've not arrived yet. Uh, <laughs> What real world animal inspired the alpha creature? Was it A, a poodle moth, B, a dung beetle, C, June bug, slash May beetle, I think it has multiple names, or D, wolf spider? What do you guys think? Definitely a bug. I live in Australia, so it's probably a spider. We have lots of spiders that want to kill you. Oh, it's right, the legs. Mm. Daddy, yeah, Daddy Long Legs. I can't remember its um, the biological name, but we just call it a Daddy. That's not going to kill you. Um, but it's actually not technically a spider, um, oh. but they you see them everywhere. Oh, Daddy Long Legs isn't a spider. 
No, it's not. It's uh, it's 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 a different class of animal. But really, it looks like a spider. Everyone calls it a spider, but it's not I true. No idea. Yeah. So well, we'll see how. In the same way that a banana is not a fruit, a banana is a berry. You know, it's like one one of those things. <laughs> really? Okay. Okay. Tim, you can't choose two. Oh wow! Oh, I just feel like it's one of the bugs. So it's um, actually <laughs> the answer is a, actually A. They talk very specifically yeah. that the antenna that like do the the interaction with the character is directly based on the poodle moth. Poodle moth. Oh. Yeah. So I mean, I assume like they had other reference, some sort of beetle, but the one they talked about explicitly was the poodle moth. Okay. Uh, maybe that's a bad question again. Maybe I suck at this. <laughs> so uh, I think we only got two more. Uh, what big reason did Andy give for not rendering Spring with Evie? That was asked a lot, uh, but they did not render with Evie. They rendered with Cycles. So was it the texture limit that comes with Evie, the anti-aliasing in Evie, the lack of motion blur, or the shadow buffers? Gosh, all of the above isn't an option. <laughs> it should be, probably. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, this is a little <laughs> blender blendery for you. I'm going to go with the I then said the uh... Okay. <laughs> Let's see. There's only a few, so maybe people bailed and got tired of this, but there's only a few answers coming in. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I had to put a space before mine cuz it won't let me say C more than once in the chat. Oh. Okay, like you said that already. That, well, I try to make all the answers usually not this, not a repeat. So that's interesting. We should report that as a bug. Um, all right. So the answer is actually D. Andy talked at length about shadow buffers. Good job, Tim. Because thank you, I knew that he worked on uh, Big Buck Bunny and with Blender Render, like shadow buffers was notoriously difficult to work with when it came to fur, and you had to just get the mm -hmm. right settings to be perfect, or else it would look like trash. So. Eevee also uses shadow buffers in a more modern way, I guess, more real-time kind of way, but it's still a problem he did not want to revisit, and uh, there's obviously other reasons, but um, that's the one he, he, he went right to when he answered that one. And last one, everything in Spring, this is true or false, everything in Spring was built to scale. A, true, when working on a team project, scale becomes very important. B, false, digital scale is arbitrary, fluid, and not important or consequential. Okay, I'm going to say not to scale because that dog's head was clearly too big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what does this mean? <laughs> so if you're talking environment, I'm going to say yes. If you're talking everything, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I should say everything in like Blender, so object size and dimensions fit in, in a relationship that was uh, related and, and cohesive. Um, no, I say no. I say false. Okay. False perspective. Well, it's supposedly true. They said that was very important to them. And uh, that was like one of the serious moments when they were in the questionnaire where they like looked at the camera and was like, always build to scale. Um, so they did. But, you know, in design wise, if the head was too big, that maybe doesn't fit necessarily in what they mean by to scale. But uh, apparently all the objects were like true m meter size, like one blender unit was one meter. Um, they said that was extremely important, especially with when Sim uh, Dynamics got involved. Like, uh, that, that can go really wrong if they're not uh, in a related scale. Awesome. So that is, hope that was fun. Hope, hope that wasn't too terrible. But uh, I will get better <laughs> at, at making questions, a little less oh, subjective. Uh, so post how many you got right in the chat. Omar, you see him doing that. Um, I will go through and add uh, 10 points for each one you got right. And uh, enjoy yeah. your XP, everyone. So, all right, that's finally the end of the stream. Uh, almost two hours. Jeezy Pete's. But thank you guys. Thank you, Tim, for being here. Thank you, Wayne, for waking up super early and, uh, and, and helping us out. Thank you for the opinions. Thank you for the, the spectrum of opinion as well. We'll all be better sure. for it. Um, Jonathan, pleasure as always, sir. And with That's that. Fun. I learned stuff. I mostly oh, just absolutely learned cool things. Totally. Me too. Um, <laughs> About not spiders. <laughs> <laughs> or bananas. I didn't know that. Um, awesome. Well, well, we'll take off. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We will see you uh, next week. I believe, Lampel, you're doing a stream, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. All right. See you guys. See you then.